Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Friday Live. My name is Ashley Hay. I'm an artist and I'm also the importer of Powertex for Australia. And I'm super excited to be here again with you this week to share some tips, tips and tricks for working with Powertex. So this week I was actually asked by a client, by a customer, one of their plaster heads on their sculpture. So for one reason or another, it had actually broken and um, she wanted to fix it. So I thought the easiest way would be to pop in and actually uh, show you guys how you can do that very, very, very simply. So uh, welcome, and if you are here, please pop uh, hello in the chat and just let me know uh, where you're from and um, I look forward to seeing if you have any questions. So please don't hesitate to ask your questions and um, of course I will be using the Powtex Ultimate Medium today and we're going to use the bronze. Good morning Renee, lovely to see you, so welcome. And we're going to use the bronze Powtex for what we're doing today and um, it is a simple fix. It is a little bit fiddly and I know from time to time that things happen. So um, whether it's a dog with a waggly tail, which the one I'm actually going to fix today and show you, um, I had my precious little dog Nala pop into the studio to visit me and on this occasion I actually forgot to lift my um, sculptures off the floor and she came in running and wagged her tail and a few of them went over. So the one that I've got uh, to repair today has actually been sitting there for a little while um, waiting to be repaired and I thought well this is the perfect opportunity to show you how you can do that. And I've also got another one where um, a client had actually had her piece fall over as well and it has broken the neck. So this can be absolutely devastating when you have gone to um, the, the bother to create a beautiful art piece and you actually have your piece break. Um, it can be really, really, really devastating. The other thing that can happen and does happen from time to time, and I've had it happen in my classes um, sometimes when I forget to remind people to be careful of um, the neck and not to put too much pressure on the plaster head, they can be working away on their piece and uh, the head suddenly snaps off. Now, I've got to say, I don't know whether I was actually jinxed or whether um, I was obviously meant to do this this week because, as I say, I was contacted by a customer last week asking questions about it. And then on the weekend, I was running my SUMA class and I was um, with a lot of clients who have been to me previously and uh, we were having a super fun day and um, I was really enjoying um, being able to have a bit of arty play along with them and um, blow me down for the first time ever I snapped off my sculpture head while I was putting on a, a hat and um, I was so embarrassed and a little bit mortified and it's devastating enough when you actually have it happen to your sculpture and it's like ah um, because I've seen it happen to other people and in my classes I just say look you can have mine and I'll fix it and um, then that I've just swapped it over but in the 10 years that I've been working with Powtex I think I've only had maybe two people break their plasters while working in a class and <laughs> That's the first time I've broken mine is on the weekend. So it was a little bit embarrassing, but I thought I'd share you um, share with everyone that little story because, um, you know, it does happen from time to time and all you have to do is kind of take your eyes off the ball and before you know it, um, you know, something uh, goes wrong that is challenging and that you need to either fix or throw your piece away. 
So Michelle's just saying that she has a collection of headless ladies, um, which are a result of poor packing and a rough driveway. So yes, um, if you're anything like me, Michelle, sometimes your artwork just gets thrown into the car and um, with a little bit of care, but not um, so much care. And Natalie is also saying, yay, I'm going to fix one of mine today. You've inspired me. And yes, oh my goodness, it is hard heartbreaking when you um, even when you know how to fix it so um, the great thing with Powtex is that it is so versatile that you can actually use it as a as a to adhere things so it's going to harden and it's also going to act like a glue so um, it is super versatile and really really awesome to work with so as i say we're going to use the bronze powtex so yes it is a little bit devastating when it happens the other thing that can happen from time to time is despite our best efforts to pack them and bubble wrap them and put things in uh, a package properly, sometimes you may get a broken head um, when you receive a package, which is also a little bit um, disappointing. If that does ever happen to you, of course, just take a photograph and flick it through to us and we will send you a replacement. But you can also mend your heads as well, that if you do receive one that is slightly damaged. so. Let's take a look. We'll hop down to the art table and um, check it out. And um, I'll show you how I've repaired my Sumer head from the weekend and just give you a few tips and tricks for what you uh, need to be aware of. Now, I won't um, be able to watch for your questions. And um, so, but make sure that you do ask questions along the way. And once I've finished demonstrating, I'll pop back and have a look at those questions. I will see if I can actually keep an eye on them while I'm working as well. Um, so yes, Natalie's also saying, and craft shows, always breaking something, but I love my stone art clay to fix it, absolutely. So um, welcome Liz as well, nice to see you back. And um, thank you everyone for joining me today and let's get started on the practical component. So we'll pop down to the art table and uh, have a look there. So we're going to use the bronze and um, let's get started. Let's have some fun. Okay, so you can see the piece that I've got here um, is headless. And so you can see it has broken off. Now, this is the piece that my dog wagged her tail and I had several pieces scatter, but this one was particularly badly damaged. And I actually really, it was one of my very early first pieces. And so it's on quite a light base. So tip number one, so you can see there, it's actually the Hebelstone sort of light bases that you get. Um, tip number one is if you use a heavier base, then obviously it's not going to topple so easily. So especially if you want to do a sculpture as a doorstop, they can be amazing. Um, use a really heavy brick and then that way um, it's not going to go anywhere. So you can see um, here that the base is actually damaged. The head has actually come off and there is also some cracking on the back. So like Natalie has already implied, we're going to use some Powtex and we're going to use some stone art as well to help actually mend these pieces. So it still has the break the way it actually broke off. And you can see as well, she's actually missing a little bit of her stone art. So I could have actually fixed that first and then attached the head, but I'm just going to go ahead and ahead and attach the head and then I can always fix the stone up, art up later on her hat and give her a new lease on life a little bit. All right, so the first thing that we want to consider is we want to make sure that the break is actually... Um, you know, going to slot together. So you can see there that she is fitting back on nicely on there. 
And because of gravity, it's actually very central on there. So providing I put the Powtex onto the join, then I just leave her to dry. So that's a really key point. Put Join them and then absolutely put them somewhere where they're not going to move for a couple of days. Um, and then that will avoid... Um, you know, it, it coming loose again. So very, very important is that first step. Okay, so this one is an easy fix because of the gravity. It has actually, and I'm not going to worry about the colour, so I'm just going to use the bronze power text because I'll probably end up putting a little bit more stone art clay on her actual necklace. So I'm putting some power text. So I've just got some bronze in a little cup here and I've got my brush and I've just put some bronze power text into there. And I'm also going to get a little bit more on my brush and I'm going to um, pop it on the join here as well. So I am being generous with it. It doesn't matter if I overpaint it because after I've joined it, like I can't say, I can fix it up. I'm also just going to go into, I might as well just paint that whole bit of that necklace. Um, so what I've done is I've also touched it up in there where um, it actually had a little bit of a crack as well. And we'll just go in here and I'm just going to paint all of this because I can highlight it again later. And it's just going to make it all blend in a little bit better than having a patch. So right around the back as well. I'm not going to take it all the way down. I could carefully paint in there, but I'm going to put the bronze gold back on it anyway um, to bring the skin up again. And then I can highlight the necklace or add a little bit more stone art around the neck as another piece of necklace there as well. Okay, so now what we want to do is we just want to sit the head onto that section there and we just find the join where it was. Now, like I say, because of gravity, that's actually pretty good there. And I'm just going to really allow that to dry. Now, on the next one I'm going to show you, it's a little bit more complex because the head is actually leaning forward. Whereas, like I say, with this one, the break was perfect and there was enough there and it had a little triangly bit, so a perfect break, um, so that that is just going to dry nicely and then I can bring up that neck piece again and I can even add a little bit more um, stone art clay around the neck area here to really strengthen it. But my first step is to let that dry. Once it's dried for a couple of days, then I can actually put some stone art clay in here. Now, let's say it wasn't vertical and it was looking like it could easily topple off. I could actually, at this point, I could pop a little bit of clay down in here just to support the head a little bit. And I could also pop a little bit of clay at the back as well because you're not going to see the back so much. So where that is actually joining there, I could actually put a little bit of clay just to really strengthen that neck there. But for now, that looks pretty good. And with the medium, you need to trust that the medium is going to do its job as well. Um, so the Powtex is really, really good. It's not an instant stick. It takes a little bit of time to dry off properly, but that is going to stick really well and it's going to harden. And then, like I say, step two would be to just strengthen that neck with either a little bit of string or a, in this case, because I've already got a stone art necklace there, it would be nice to add a little bit more of the ivory stone art around her neck there to just make sure that um, she's not going to lose her head again. Um, because the last thing you want is for that to 
um, actually drop off. So I'm going to move her very, very carefully and leave her standing over here. So she can just stand there away from, hopefully I don't knock her while I'm doing this other one. And I'll bring the other one up. So with this one, um, this one, they have already tried to repair it. So as I say, it was actually, this is a client sculpture. She did it in a class and um, she took it home and then she um, knocked it over and it lost its head. So she has already tried to repair it with the stone art and with the power text, but you can see that there's some residue on there and it hasn't actually worked. One of the reasons, and I'll show you now, so I'll bring her sculpture up here. Oh, it's a little bit high. I'll just move my stool over and pop the headless one down here. So you can see. All right. So when we actually put this head on here, um, see how it's at an angle? So it's actually leaning forward uh, so that it it's going, it's not sitting on that plane of gravity where the gravity is going to hold it down. What's actually going to happen is it's going to want to topple off. So in this case, the easiest way is to actually put your, um, use a cloth to actually support the head and actually lie her down on the table. I'm going to try and do it standing up so that you guys can see. But what I would ordinarily do is I would just get something like a tea cloth and I would lie the sculpture down so it's nice and flat. And I would plan to leave it there for a few days until it's actually dried off. So I'll put some Powtex in here and I'll also make the stoner into a little bit of a more slippery clay so that it um, will give it a little bit of an instant stick and hopefully that might work enough. Sometimes what I do as well is I might use a little bit of glad wrap around the neck as well to support it or plastic wrap. But what you will find with that is sometimes the, the actual physicality of putting the plastic wrap on it might actually pull it away as well. So let's go. Let's see what we can do here. She's very tall, this one. So I'll just stand her there and get my brush again. Use my cloth for my brush. Okay. And then we're going to pop this in here. So. So the stone art, which essentially, if you don't know what stone art is, we talk about it an awful lot because it is absolutely awesome. So essentially, the stone art is an air dried clay that when you, it's a powder form, a refined powder, that when you mix it with the Powtex Ultimate Medium, it makes an air dried clay. It is absolutely beautiful to work with. Natalie, who is actually watching, will say, yes, I love it, because she does so much artwork with the stone art. And it is, again, one of those must have totally versatile mediums for your art kit. So you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm just doing the same as before putting some Powtex in there and then also putting some Powtex onto that section where we're going to join it. And I'm going to get a little bit of the pre-made stone art clay. So this is pre-mixed. If you want to know how to mix the stone art clay up, there is actually a video on YouTube that you can watch that I've done um, that will show you how to mix the clay. So here I can actually, I don't need a lot and I want to get it and might even use slightly less than that. And I'm going to put some, I'm going to get my fingers a little bit messy here. So I've just put some extra Powtex onto that. So it's going to get more sticky than clay. And um, remember we used to make 
like a little bit of a slip with clay where um, you would join something. It's a little bit like that. So you're making it a little bit sticky. I'm just going to wet it a little bit more so it's even stickier. And then I'm going to actually pop that little sticky bit of clay onto the join there. And hopefully this will be enough. I'm just going to get a damp cloth and wash my fingers off so that I'm not getting Powtex onto uh, too much Powtex onto the sculpture and that I don't stick to the sculpture as well. So a good tip is if you start to stick to the sculpture, you actually want to make sure to wash your hands because you've probably got Powtex on them. So now I can actually press that into that clay that is actually on there. And then I can also work any little bits of excess clay in around. Now, I don't want to touch it too much because you can see it is actually staying on there. Um, but I do want to just make sure that it is flat. And then I can get my brush and I can actually get in there. Put some more on there. Around the neck again, I would actually be painting a lot of this so that when I repaint and re-embellish it, you don't get a patchy look and so you can't actually tell it's broken. So with this, the best way will be now to, I'm going to add a little bit more of the clay just around that break there very, very carefully. I could actually, at this point, I could leave it. And generally that's what I do. I'd leave it at this stage because it is very, very fragile. And then in a couple of days, I would then, um, you know, do the next step where I can take a little bit more stone uh, clay in and fill some of those gaps and then maybe make a lovely neck ring or use some string to create some jewellery that will then not only camouflage it, but it will make that join super, super, super strong. So again, I'm just sort of mushing that clay between my fingers and hopefully doing this, I won't actually break it off. Because like I say, that is the risk because it is still very, very fragile. So now I've got a little bit of clay on here which is on that front surface, which is just going to give that a little bit of a bite and make sure that that head just stays in place for the next couple of days while that Powertex is drying. And then I can actually go back in and see how you can see that there's a, I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little gap here on this side. I'm just going to wash my hands again so that they're not sticking because the moment I stick to the piece, the, the head will just come off. So we want to be very careful. It is quite fragile. And I can pop a little bit more Powtex onto that back section there. And now I can leave it. So I'm just going to hold, see if I can ho actually hold that closer to the camera. So now I can leave that to dry for a couple of days. After a couple of days, it's going to be a lot stronger and I can come back and I can actually bind it with um, some fabric. So like some string to make jewellery or like I say, with some stone art to make jewellery like I had on my other piece. So there we have it. That's the second one done. And I'm just going to leave her carefully to stand there and uh, be alone. And I'll show you um, my final piece, which I'll show you how I did a very quick fix on this. 
because like the other day, so we were making sumas and this one is very bright. It's very red, red and yellow. Um, I was going to do some blue as well, but um, we'll see what happens with him now. Hopefully I can tie him in. But once we've done the 3D flex, normally you would actually spray it with Bista. But the nice thing is it has actually cracked anyway. Um, but because I'm going to do it in two parts, I didn't want to spray the Bista until I was spraying it all in one piece. Otherwise, part of it would have ended up darker than the other part, and I didn't really want that. So this was the one where the head snapped off the other day. And so what I did, because I was teaching, I needed to be able to show people, and I, I actually, I couldn't face... <laughs> I couldn't actually face having a headless sculpture to demonstrate on, so I really needed to fix him so that I was enjoying um, looking at it. Now, what I did instead of putting the wet power tex on is I just taped the head on with masking tape. It made it a very fast fix. And then I painted it with a runny mix of 3D Flex. So just a little bit of 3D Flex in my red Powtex. And I painted over the top of the masking tape. After I had done that, I then got a piece of string and I put Powtex onto the string and then I bound the neck. And then I also put a little bit of 3D Flex on the back of the head here. It is now super strong, but on the day it was still quite wobbly, but at least I could look at it <laughs> and it didn't look, um, it didn't make me feel quite so bad looking at it with no head for the entire day. So um, made me feel a little bit happier. As I say, I was super embarrassed. I've never actually done that before. And of course, doing it in front of other people is even worse um, so not only was I devastated about the fact that I'd broken my head off my artwork, I actually was also a little bit embarrassed to have done it while I was teaching a class. So there you go. Um, that's my little story. But the great thing is that with Powtex, it is so easy to fix things because it does act like a glue as well. So I hope that that has given you some tips and tricks for actually repairing some of your sculptures. And I'll hop down to my other camera now and just have a look and check out some of the comments and see whether anyone has any questions. So... Right, so let's check out the chat box. So if you do have any questions, please um, do pop your questions in the chat box. And of course, um, what we've used in today's demonstration, as I've already mentioned, is the bronze ultimate medium, Powtex ultimate medium. And the Powtex comes in 11 different colors. So I could have used ivory or I could have used transparent if I wanted it to dry clear. But I just had a little bit of bronze out and I thought, I'll just use that, that's fine. And I can tie it in and make it look really good. So, and then we have also used stone art as well. So, which is a mix. The one that I used was a mix of the bronze Powtex and the stone art um, powder. So um, don't forget, if you want to connect with us and you have any further questions about anything, I love hearing from you. So this was the perfect opportunity to actually hear from um, where someone sent me a message and said, hey, I've got this problem. And I just thought, well, it's a lot easier to show you guys than to try and explain. Um, and it just really is about doing it carefully and taking your time, not rushing to repair it, doing it um, just really super carefully. And the key thing is to actually allow it to dry before you touch it too much for a couple of days. Okay, let's check out. Um, so we've got a few comments. So I'm just having a look here. So Natalie's just saying, um, I also use Glad Wrap on that first step to hold the head in place, absolutely. So, um, like I said, you can tear off a long strip of Glad Wrap. I have done that. Um, sometimes I have found that it actually um, has moved the head more, more than it's been helpful. So, 
you can try that and if you like to do that then that is definitely um, a helpful thing as well so thanks Natalie thanks for sharing and she's also just saying thanks great idea um, to show this to people it is definitely a question that we get asked quite frequently and it is um, you know, something that everyone faces from time to time with their sculptures is, you know, something has broken. But the great thing is, like I say, with the Powtex is that you can easily fix things and get them back and make them beautiful again. So, um, yes, <laughs> absolutely. So if you are using plastic wrap, carefully and don't tie it too tight, definitely. <laughs> So a good tip, Nat. So absolutely. And um, Renee is also just saying, uh, Natalie Parrish, definitely stone art is a go for using with Powertex. So definitely. Alrighty, so as I have said, um, make sure that if you haven't already, please um, join us in the Powtex Australia Creative Hub. We're a great community there. And if you're ever stuck with anything, there's always someone in the group who will be willing to help. So there's a lot of experienced artists working with Powtex in the Powtex Creative Hub. And we're very, very keen to see your artwork, what you do with Powtex, and also to help you if you're stuck with anything. So please connect with us there, share your work with us and share what you have found as well. And if you do want to learn more about Powtex, then of course you can go to the website and you will find um, that there is a lot of product information sheets on there. But as well as that, you'll find on Facebook, there's a heap of um, Facebook Lives that you can watch in review. So you can replay them. You just go to the video section on the Powtex Australia page and there is over 18 months of videos that you can watch because I've been doing a live now since February last year every week. So there's a lot of content on there. So if you're looking for some free content with different uh, tips and tricks, then you will find a lot on there. And of course, you will also find um, some videos on YouTube as well. So check it out and i hope you have a wonderful creative weekend just before we do go what is everyone doing this weekend just drop it in the comments so creatively what is your plan for the weekend are you going to be creating this weekend so i'm actually going to be painting at the plain air down under festival this weekend so it's on from tomorrow until Monday. It's a long weekend here in WA. And so we're going to be painting for three days. There's going to be artists. There's over 100 artists actually painting in the Mandra and Pinjarra area. So tomorrow we're in Mandra. And then on Sunday, we're actually in Pinjarra. And then Monday, we're back in Mandra for a quick paint. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun. What I particularly love about it is I particularly love being part of the community where you're just getting together and networking and chatting with um, lots of very, very talented artists. For those of you who aren't, who are in Perth, and you're not painters or you're not participating in the festival, it's a great opportunity for you guys to get down there and check it out and have a look. And I will, of course, for the rest of you who can't get to Perth and who aren't here, I will, of course, do some lives or do take some photos and send some pickies over the weekend. Depends how much, how absorbed I get in my painting. But my plan is to actually show you as well something of the experience we have at the festival this weekend. So what are you guys doing? I'd love to hear what you're doing creatively. So um, Natalie is off to a workshop with Christina Davidson to do abstract painting. So that will be super exciting. So I'm sure you will love that. That will be a lot of fun. Um, so maybe just drop in the comments later on what you're doing this weekend once you've got a plan. I hope that this segment has actually inspired you to create but also to fix some of those broken, forgotten sculptures that may be headless and lying around your studio space. So have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And um, Renee's just saying have, have fun. 
uh, at the festival and um, Michelle is saying that she's building scarecrows for a festival. So that will be absolutely exciting. So, um, oh, and Natalie's and saying, oh, I'm also going to fix one of my headless sculptures. Yay. <laughs> So I'm sure many of you out there will be doing that this weekend, um, getting some of those fixed up and revamped so that um, they become beautiful again and give them a new life. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, um, have a fabulous weekend. Oh, hang on. We've just got another comment here. Amanda is saying she's making a new Powtex painting with structure and some junk she's just found while she's been cleaning up. So super exciting. I look forward to seeing everyone's posts in the group, um, what you have done this weekend. And don't forget, if you do have any questions, please pop in and just ask them. And you never know, I might do a live on it to help you. So um, thanks for joining me. And I hope you guys all have an absolutely brilliant um, weekend and ciao for now. Bye.